is time. Let's do this. I was trying to aesthetically take this off and then hold on. <laughs> God dang it. Got it. Spoiler alert, it's me from the future to tell you that there are going to be spoilers in this video. Don't watch it if you haven't read the mistake. Okay, <laughs> you've been warned. Hello besties, I'm Larissa for those of you who don't know and if you know, hello. I'm going to be reading the mistake today. That's literally it. My first video on this channel, I read The Deal for the very first time, which is the first book in the Off Campus series. So now I'm going to be reading The Mistake, which is the second book in the Off Campus series. So, you know, I'm going in order. I feel like that didn't need to be explained but I explained it anyway, so deal with it. I'm excited to read this one. I'm a little bit, como se dice, scared that no one's gonna live up to Gare Graham and to Hannah, like Han Han and G. Yes, I call them by their nicknames because they are my friends. They have my whole heart and soul, and I just, I just don't know if it's gonna live up to it. I don't know if anything is gonna live up to it, but you know what? We're gonna try it. We're gonna, we're gonna, come with an open mind and we're gonna read about, who is it about? Oh, it's John Logan. Oh, that's exciting. Okay, I really wanted to see more about John Logan because the only thing I saw by him is that he was a down bitch for Garrett, which I loved, and then that he had a crush on Hannah. That was weird. I don't wanna hear any more about that. So hopefully that's over in this book. This one's really short. Anyway, I'm gonna take you along with me to read this book. Let me know any other books you want me to read after I finish the off-campus series. I saw some people ask if I'm gonna do all the books, like a vlog for all the books. Yes, it's raining outside today and I have nothing else to do but this. So I think I'm just gonna read this whole thing. And maybe I'll go to Barnes and Noble and read a little bit there. That sounds like a good time in the rain, you know, on some Twilight vibes. All right, let's begin this, The Mistake. Wait, should I do a cool transition? Let's try it. Why do I feel like that wasn't cool at all? I just said I didn't want to hear any more about Logan being in love with Hannah. And the first sentence of this book is, lusting over your best friend's girlfriend sucks. Yeah, it does, Logan. How about you stop? I am pleased to announce that my babies, Garrett and Hannah, are doing great. Yes. I'm glad that they're keeping us updated. Yes. <laughs> Also, I like this part. I'm comfortable enough with my hetero status to say that if I did play for the other team, I wouldn't just fuck Garrett Graham. I'd marry him. Say less, me too. More about Dean. Dean still intrigues me. I'm still interested to know what his deal is. Okay, wait, this is interesting. So Grace is like a freshman in like a, a good girl virgin vibe. Wow, so they're gonna go for like the innocent girl bad boy not bad boy but you know what i mean kind of vibe for them interesting interesting of course of course he knocks at her door by coincidence this has never happened to me not once in college <laughs> he just knocks at her door by utter coincidence and as she was talking about having a crush on him he knocks at her door and is like oh shit you live here let's hang out i'm i'm sorry it's never happened to me, but if some random guy knocked on my door and was like, can I come in, let's hang out? I'd be like, I don't think so, dude. I don't think so. I've watched too much Criminal Minds. I think that Hodge would not be proud of me for letting that happen. You know what I mean? Let me just say, I already love Grace. She babbles a lot and she has OCD. I love her. She's quirky, but, but in a funny way and babbles a lot and brings up Ted Bundy. What a bad bitch. Yes, Grace. Y'all. Are they really watching Die Hard and eating gummy worms right now? That's so wholesome. They're already so wholesome. <laughs> I'm pleased by this. I will be more pleased once he stops talking about Hannah. <laughs> I have butterflies. Look at this. Look at this. Look at it. <laughs> okay, ready? What are you doing? I whisper. Well, you were looking at me like you wanted me to kiss you. His blue eyes become heavy lidded. So I was thinking I might do that. Okay, John Logan, I see you. You know what? I underestimated you coming into this book and let me just say that I was wrong. <laughs> wow, boys got game, honestly. You were looking at me like you wanted me to kiss you. So I was thinking I might do that. <laughs> I'm on chapter four already. How does this happen? I feel like it's literally only been 10 minutes. I am so pleased by them. I love Logan. I hate Logan. Did he really just finish and then say, thanks for having me over, I had fun, goodbye? My man dipped. Logan! What the fuck? No, no, no. Mm -mm, mm -mm. I am not happy. I'm sure Grace is not happy and I'm not happy. She didn't even finish. She didn't even finish. Wait, I'm laying on the floor and I'm on page 44. Logan just asked Dean if a girl has ever faked it with him. I feel like that's the worst person to ask about this. I feel like you should have asked Garrett or Tuck. He dug himself in that hole, honestly. That was a bad idea. He didn't even answer his question either. He just kind of just like made fun of him and moved along. <laughs> He deserved it. 
Logan deserved it for what he did to Grace. Wait. <laughs> he literally just said, I've been thinking nonstop about how I didn't make you last time and how badly I want to change that. Honestly, he has a way with words. <laughs> what the fuck? My boy really knows how to talk. I am not a fan of Ramona whatsoever. First of all, that name reminds me of that girl from Full House, which is fine. I don't know why that upsets me so much. It's okay. But I just don't like her. I don't trust her. I don't like her. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Does not seem like a good friend. I do not get Allie and Hannah vibes from Ramona and Grace. No. I wonder what's going on with this thing that he, uh, he can't play after college. Why? I don't understand. He said he made a promise to someone. Confusion. Oh, uh, okay. So he's going to take care of his, his, dad's shop and shit okay now i understand so that's why he can't play uh i was gonna say football what's it called hockey after graduation because he has to take care of his father oh dominic toretto family means everything Boo. <laughs> oh not them running into them at the movies <laughs> dean going to the movies just makes me smile i don't know why it's such a normal thing to do but it just brings a smile to my face Ew, Ramona. Ramona is good for one thing because she told Logan that it's Grace's birthday. <laughs> I don't know why I like that so much. She says, it's Grace's birthday. My friend, uh, the friend announces. And he goes, shit, it is. I grin at her. Happy birthday, gorgeous. <laughs> you know, uh, Garrett called Hannah Wellesley. And then I guess Logan is going to be calling Grace gorgeous because he said it twice now. I love that. I love gorgeous as a nickname. Yes. Big yes. Big yes. Chapter 10, you guys. That's all I'll say about it. Um, if you want to know what I'm talking about, go read chapter 10. Uh, supply closet. Maybe that rings a bell. I'm a little hot and bothered. <laughs> listen, listen. Let's just talk about how Logan is a feminist. Look at this. They're talking about Piper Stevens and I guess how she hooks up with a lot of the hockey players. He says, I have no problem with that though. Every time I hear someone refer to her as a slut, I threaten to beat down because what the fuck? Most of the dudes I know have screwed their way through college and nobody bats an eye when they do it. So no, I'm not about to judge Piper for her very active sex life. Ladies and gentlemen, him. We love our feminist king. Wait, you guys. He saw the Twitter, like he saw the Twitter thread of, of people saying that Grace was making up, hooking up with him. And so he went to the dining hall just to prove to everyone that it's true, that she's not lying. Logan's winning my heart. He's winning my heart. Also, who would make a, who would make a Twitter thing like that? Graceless liar. Do you have nothing better to do? You're in college, grow the fuck up. You know, and he was just defending Piper Stevens. And now she's here acting like a bitch. We take it back, Piper. You are a slut. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. She's just a bitch. She's not a slut. He leans down and kisses me on the mouth with tongue right there in the dining hall. Give it up for that boy. Why don't I hear more people talking about him? He's an icon living. This moment here of him walking into the dining hall, kissing her and taking her away, kind of reminds me of a walk to remember. He walks in, defends her, and kisses her and walks away with her and it's the most beautiful moment and this kind of reminds me of that if you haven't read or watched a walk to remember get on it the best nicholas sparks beats the notebook i'll never get over john logan's like little acronyms bnb &B is bag and brag <laughs> and grace is like is it bed and breakfast <laughs> that was a good guess but it's not and he says like obs no prob <laughs> This man does not like to waste time speaking. This is so cute. The water tower day. My heart. Oh, he's gonna take her virginity. Grace's virginity. Meet John Logan's hands. You like that Garrett reference? Yes. Take her virginity, King. Wait, what? Oh my god. No. No, no, no. He did not just tell her that he was trying to get over someone else while he was with her. Oh my god. Logan. Everything in me wants to scream. Why is he into Hannah? Why is this a thing? Who said? Who allowed this? At least, you know what? Now I've reached the part of the book where I know why it's called a mistake. It's because he made a fucking mistake. Oh. Oh, so he doesn't want... Okay, okay, okay. I feel much better. He doesn't want Hannah. He's not in love with Hannah. He wants what Hannah and Garrett have. He wants a relationship. He wants love. And he's seeing his best friend have it and he wants that. So he's longing for that. Oh my good. And he just left Grace. Oh my goodness. Kill me. Someone kill me. 
Well, now you can't just try to call her. It's done. Look what you just did. Anyway, I am on chapter 14. I am going to stop here for a second because I'm going to go drive to Barnes and Noble and read there because it's raining and it's nice out and that's just the vibes. That's just what I want to do. So I will catch up with you once I get there. Wait, I'm not going to film inside Barnes and Noble. I guess I'll film you reading it a little bit, but I'm I'll give you updates in the car. We'll probably finish this because I'm already on page 104. I have no stuff control. I'll be right back. Hello, besties. I don't remember the last thing I said to you. I think I last told you that I was coming to Barnes & Noble. I wasn't lying. I'm here in the parking lot. So I've read 104 pages so far. Chapter 14, um, Mr. Logan has decided he wants Grace back after he figgity figgity fucked up. Let's see this man's work for it. I want to see it. I want to see Grace make him... Um, jump through a couple of hoops and i want to see her take him back obviously i am team grolin no i don't like that i am team lace no i also don't like that drace nope gron i don't like any of that what is their couple name i'm unsure anyway i'm gonna go inside barnes and noble i'm gonna get myself a snack i'm gonna sit my butt on that chair and i am not moving until i finish this book well maybe i'll move if they kick me out let me go inside barnes and noble oh yes we've got a beautiful blueberry muffin and a book. Amazing. I'm of course gonna get a coffee, but after. So we'll see. People are coming. I'm nervous. Goodbye. Not me trying to film in public without anyone noticing. I knew I couldn't trust Ramona. I knew it. What the fuck? Besties. <laughs> I just spent like five hours at Barnes and Noble. I'm done. I finished it. And the only thing I filmed was me saying that I knew it about Ramona. What the fuck? <laughs> How did this happen? Anyway, let me talk to you about every single thing I've read. Don't worry. I wrote down on my notes exactly what I wanted to say to you because I couldn't talk at Barnes and Noble and I'm a fool and didn't want to come back in the car and I just really wanted to finish this book. I was so, so like into it. I was eating a blueberry muffin, drinking some water. I also got a pink drink and I was just like, fully into this story. I could not stop. You could not have dragged me out of there. I only left because I finished. First of all, Ramona. I knew it. I knew it. I knew she wasn't good news. I was so shocked that the time jumped so much throughout the book. Like, because, you know, we know that Logan messed up, right? We can all agree that Logan messed up. But I didn't know that it was going to jump through the whole summer and then go back to next semester of them trying again. I love seeing her dye her hair and become blonde. She said Selena Gomez as a blonde. I love to see that for the summer, Hannah and Wellesley, that's the same person. Wellesley and G were roommates during the summer. <laughs> Oh my god, I will say, I think Hunter is going to be important because they talked about him so much in this book. Not so much, but like they praised him enough. It's getting dark outside. Does it look like I care? Sky, you need to slow down because I need to finish talking about this book, okay? I'm going to need you to relax. I know it's 7 p.m. I know, but relax. When he brought her the muffin, Garrett comes in and interrupts him and he says, go away, G, I'm wooing. <laughs> And Garrett goes, hey, I'm Garrett. And she says, I'm Grace. I didn't mean to interrupt. I'll wait outside so my boy can keep uh, wooing. <laughs> she goes, no need. We're all done here. <laughs> Logan says, we most certainly are not. <laughs> I lived for that. I lived for that. I love how little Logan cares about what everybody's thinking about what he's doing. Like he's there buying her a muffin, trying to convince her to date him, and he did not once care what the boys have to say about it. Logan, baby. Logan! When they kissed in the party scene, whew, and she was there with Morris, and then he went the next day to declare his intentions to Morris, being like, I'm sorry, but I'm just not gonna back down. And then it turns out that they became friends. That was so cool. Morris was like, I can't compete with that dude. And honestly, Morris, you would be correct. First of all, his name is Morris. What kind of person looks at a baby, a cute little baby, and says, hmm, hmm, Morris. Another person that I think is going to be important, Colin Fitzgerald, right? They emphasized Colin almost as much as they emphasize Hunter. I want to talk to you about something. First of all, Grace making a list of six things he has to do before she goes on a date with him. Hold up. Let me put the book down. Hold up. That is the baddest bitch I've ever seen. Yes. I said I wanted to see her make him jump through hoops. She did not disappoint. And let me tell you, John Logan understood the assignment. Because not only did he do the six things she said he had to do, he did them well. And he did it without complaining. Oh my God, he's underrated. He's really underrated. Like, look at this scene when he's writing the poem. And then Garrett and Tuck catch him. And they take the poem from his hands. <laughs> And he says, what if I steal the words to Amazing Grace? I can change it to, um, Terrific Grace. Yep, Garrett cracks. Pure gold right there. Terrific Grace. 
I pondered the next line. How sweet your ass Tucker supplies. <laughs> Brilliant minds at work. Terrific grace. How sweet your ass. <laughs> and then when Logan said, bros before hoes, dude, like to not text Hannah what he's saying. And Garrett says, call my girlfriend a hoe one more time and you won't have a bro. That's what I like to hear. The poem was one thing on the list. A collage was another one with all the things he loved about her. The blue roses that he painted with tie with like dye. The picture on the on the chase. Oh my god, the celebrity endorsement. Oh, the origami hearts and how Garrett and Hannah helped him make origami hearts for Grace. Ah! This book was so wholesome. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Fuck, that part of the book really got me. When they had their first official kiss after the date and grace literally said his mouth captures mine in a blistering kiss belonging it's the only way to describe the exquisite rush of sensation that washes over me his lips belong on mine Fuck. <laughs> what what shut up shut the front door belonging oh i love that they put uh, Grace and Logan also going to a Bo Maxwell party, just like Hannah and Garrett did. Also, I'm wondering what the hell is the deal with Sabrina and Dean? If I didn't know any better, I would think they were going to have an enemies to lovers arc. But there's no way because Dean has to be with Allie. I already claimed that. Al Kennedy wouldn't do me wrong. She wouldn't do me dirty. I haven't picked up on that part of the story yet. But you know, I still have two books to go, so. The thing I loved a lot throughout this book is their relationship was so slow building up but so steady the whole time. He really jumped through all the hoops to be with her and really show that he wanted this and she wanted this and they worked for it. And I love their little quirky moments. Like I love that he started bringing up Ted Bundy because he was spending time with her. Her mannerisms got to him and how she says like, question, and he goes, hit me. I don't know why I like that so much. Question, hit me. <laughs> Chapter 29. Chapter 29. Just looking at it again, I'm like, I can't believe I read chapter 29 in public. I'm so wild. Look at me. Oh my God, Emma, no. Emma. <laughs> the fact that he didn't have sex for six months waiting for her. Gotta love celibacy. You know what I mean? My boy, John Logan, really showed that he wanted this. You guys, page 233. Hannah, Garrett, Logan, and Grace having breakfast and seeing that whole dynamic just hit different for me. I love seeing them all interact. I can't wait till Tuck has someone and Dean has someone so I can see every single one of them interact together, like a big friend group that, that's all dating. I mean, that sounds really weird, but you know what I mean. So wholesome. This book was so wholesome. I did feel so bad for John Logan, the whole book, because as an alcoholic, and I felt so bad for him that he felt like there was no way out. But I loved how it showed that he understands that alcoholism is a disease. I love that they didn't downplay that in any way. Like he was like, hey, I know that you guys think my dad's just a douche, but like he was a good dad. He just has a disease. Like he's struggling and I can't bail on him. I'm gonna cry. I'm such a crier though. So it wouldn't, it wouldn't be weird if I did cry right now. Don't bat an eye. If you see me crying online, don't worry about it. All right. I cry all the time. Page 250. When Logan went to go get Ramona. So don't love Ramona. I will say the book didn't change my mind at all. I am not a Ramona fan at all. But the fact that they went to go get her was amazing. Now, you guys, page 261, when they have the fight about like Logan is, is scared that she's going to bail on him whenever things get rough with his dad. And she's like, are you fucking kidding me? You really think that I would do that to you? And then as she's walking out the door, she goes, and just in case my reaction to your idiocy didn't make it clear where I stand with us, then let me spell it out for you. I whirl around to scowl at him. I love you, you stupid jackass. Then I storm out of his room and slam the door behind me. <laughs> I love angry love confessions. All right. Is it just me? Like, am I just unhappy? Do I just not want to be a happy person? Because angry love uh, decl declaration, <laughs> angry love declarations just get me. Like the way that she said, I love you, you stupid jackass and walked out the door. I'm like, yes, yes. Now, the radio moment. Let's take a moment of silence for the radio. You take a moment of silence at home and I'll take a moment of silence here, okay? Are you ready? Ready? One, two, three, go. Radio moment! Ah! You guys! 
yes, that was one of my favorite moments in book history. It was so good. And I just was not expecting it. I was sitting at Barnes and Noble, as you know, as I told you, that's where I was sitting in my little blueberry muffin. And I was like, how is this bitch going to fix this shit? He fucked up. How's he going to fix it? And then he declared his love for her on national radio. And I simply melted away. I simply became my muffin. That made no sense. The fact that he told her he was going to marry her one day, like so simply just, I'm going to marry you one day. There's no doubt in my mind. This man does not play games. The only game he plays is hockey. I quickly descend the porch steps and make my way to the truck. It's still gloomy out. The trees are swaying ominously. The clouds are a thick, dark mass undulating overhead. The sky is more black than gray. And yet my future has never looked so bright. Are you kidding me? Are you joking? Ah! Let me talk about the epilogue and how the epilogue was the best thing I've ever read in my entire life. It's two years later, so it's after they graduated and all that. And it not only shows uh, Logan and Grace, but it shows Hannah and Garrett. And it's Hannah and Grace watching Garrett and Logan play for the Bruins. Are you joking? Could I be any more happy? No. At the very end. It's so funny, Hannah muses. Garrett told me that he and Logan have talked about the two of them in Bruins jerseys ever since freshman year, and now it's actually happening. I guess some dreams really do come true. I follow her gaze, a smile touching my lips, as I watch the man I love in the uniform he loves flying across the ice to the roar of the crowd. Yep, I answer softly. I guess they do. I have chills. <laughs> it's so cute, and it's so wholesome. Oh my god. Now let me just tell you that I did rate this five stars. I did. Instantly. I was so scared coming into this and skeptical because Garrett and Hannah spoiled me and I just was not expecting anything to beat them. Granted, this did not beat Garrett and Hannah for me. Garrett and Hannah are going to have a special place in my heart forever, especially Garrett Graham. Like, I can't with them. But this did so good. It was such a good follow up. Still five stars. I am impressed. I am so impressed. Go read this if you haven't. I'll be reading the next one immediately. I will be taking you along, of course, as I did now. I will make sure that I actually read it with you guys instead of reading it and then coming back because I messed up this time. Don't blame me. Love made me crazy. If it doesn't, you ain't doing it right, okay? Next one is the score. I'll read it with you guys. I'll take you along with me. Don't forget to subscribe. Let me know any other videos you want to see from me. And that's it. Thank you for coming along with me, you guys. I love you.